Hey YouTube, this is uh, Brandon Smith, uh, BSU X01. Um, today I'm doing a deck preview of what I've been playing lately in tournaments. Um, I played Saturday at my locals and I have a record of being undefeated and I played Friday. Um, I had one draw to draw into top eight and win. And I had one tournament yesterday which I lost one round. And I was playing why and uh, why not. Um, I'm playing kind of like almost a mono black deck, but I have white splash for uh, a couple cards, um, especially with the side deck. So let me just go through and run uh, through the what you call it. Um, first, we have Ravenous Rats. I play four copy of this card. Uh, this is a card that is a longtime friend of the Magic the Gathering game, but it's back in M13. And uh, like me, I like to preview our you know old cards with new tricks. Uh, Ravenous Rats still does the same thing. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it's hard upon it discards a card. Um, it's a very strong card in this format, especially against control decks. Um, makes them get rid of options uh, before they would like to, you know, use them. Um, also, at the two drop spot, I play three Sign and Bloods. Uh, they brought this back. This is another card that's debuted in M13. Um, target player draws two cards and loses two life. Now, this card is very versatile, in my opinion, because it can either draw you two cards and net you advantage, or be used as a burn spell uh, to finish your opponent off. Uh, moving on to the next card, also at the two drop spot, is Go for the Throat. Uh, this card is very good. Uh, destroy target non-artifact creature, which means that about 90% of all the creatures that are being played in standard right now um, die to this card. Um, the only exception are artifact creatures and creatures with hexproof. Um, I played two copies of Guest Verdict. Uh, this card is from New Phyrexia, or actually, no, Merit and Besieged. Uh, this card is a very strong common. Um, Glad it was reprinted, or reprinted as a common. Um, this card from Innistrad, Uncommon, Tribute to Hunger. I play four, and this is at the beginning of the three spot. Uh, I like it a lot, um, especially since you gain life. And most creatures' uh, power are equal to their toughness in most uh, scenarios. So you can afford to tap out sometimes and then uh, let them hit you and then gain the life next turn. Um, that's Tribute to Hunger. Um, another card that's good, this is a black control style deck. Is a pristine talisman. Um, it's tap add one colors mana. You gain one life. Um, by itself, the card isn't the strongest card, but in the long run of the game, this card gains more value every time you use it. Not only does it accelerate your mana, but it gives you life to keep you in the game. Um, I played three lingering souls, um, which is you know black white tokens abuse this card a lot. And a couple other decks play this card because it just gives you board presence. And when you don't play that many creatures, you want to have a uh, board presence. Um, and this gives you the board presence uh, that you desire. Um, this game is probably MVP of the deck. Uh, Mimic Vat, some Scars of Meriden. Basically, whenever a creature is killed, you put it on, you exile it from the graveyard and uh, imprint it on Mimic Vat. And so a deck with no creatures, which is what I play, or little to no creatures, becomes a deck where you play whatever your opponent's playing. If they're not playing creatures, you side these out, but more than likely they are, especially with the green-red aggro and the night aggro in the pod decks that are being played right now. Um, three copies of Mutilate in the main board. Um, this card is very strong. It's a board sweeper. It's To me, it's the new Day of Judgment. Um, a lot of people might argue, but it gets around being indestructible. So I think that this card is going to have a lot of value in the future. Uh, right now, it's probably like $4 on eBay or Star City Games. It's probably $4. But I think it's going to pick up, and a lot of people are going to understand that it's a very good card. Uh, play two copies of Liliana of the Dark Realms. Um, personally, I have a problem with mana in my deck. Not in my deck, but me as a player, I don't draw it. So once I get to four, it's like, you know, now I'm starting to search out the land that I need to keep my turns going. Um, her other ability, let's take a look at her uh, minus three ability. Target player gets plus X, plus X, or minus X, minus X, and to end a turn when X is the number of swamps. Now that can be used as a very good defensive ability, but 
uh, this deck abuses it on the offensive. Uh, here's one of the cards that uh, abuses that ability, the Batter Skull. Uh, it's a living weapon, 4-4. Four, four, and it is a very solid card. Since I play many kill spells, including the Mutilates and the Board Sweepers, and other people play Board Sweepers, this card is a lot of value in one card. It's uh, multiple creatures. Here's a card that's a dollar right now that I've been playing. Staff of Nan. I think mostly the value in this card comes from the fact that it says at the beginning of your upkeep draw card, uh, it has nothing really to do with deal one damage to target creature or player, but it's a very strong effect when your opponent's playing one drops, and you don't want to use like your go for throw on a bird. So you can, you know, later game uh, if they're still there, which they probably won't be, but if they still try to resolve and equip it to a sword or whatever they do, uh, Staff and them is pretty strong. Um, play two Karn Liberated. Um, a lot of people are scared to put their mana base this high, but with Lily's effect at the potential of paying three to four, two to three for some of these cards, uh, it adds a lot of value, so you might as well just play them. And last card in the deck besides land is Crystal Brand. Um, there's no need for me to tell you why. If I pay two land for this guy, I get too much value. Um, there's four copies of the Ink Moth Nexus, which... Uh, Liliana with the plus ability allows me to one shot some opponents in late game. Um, it's not going to be seen a lot of activating in the early game unless my opponent taps out and I can get a few pokes in. Uh, there's four isolated chapels. <coughs> four isolated chapels in the deck for the white. And I play one planes and then 15 swamps. So if you like the deck, you can try it out at your locals. Um, I've lost a total of one game, and it's to Delver. Um, I'm working on how to get around being mana leaked, but there's, you know, really no way. All right. Thanks, everybody. BSU, Geese, X01 out.